Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. Uh, I'm Andrew Sumner and I am privileged to be joined by British television's first lady of the paranormal and my fellow Northwesterner, a person I've watched on TV for a long time, Yvette Fielding. How are you, mate? <laughs> oh, it's so lovely to be here with you. Honestly, I, I want to hug you. Yeah, but I'm sending you a virtual Forbidden Planet hug through the ether. Oh, oh lovely. It's really nice to be with you and, ch and chatting, and I've been looking forward to it for days. <laughs> well, well, thanks so much for joining us. And we're here, of course, to talk about your amazing career in the paranormal, your amazing career on TV, but primarily your your new novel, The House in the Woods, the first epi the first instalment in the Ghost Hunter Chronicles. Your, your first book, which is publishing on the 30th of September. And anybody watching this can order from the links attached to this conversation. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I've got a copy of it here. This is Brilliant. yours. That's what I like one. to see. Oh, go. fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, so, yeah. so that what was, um, what you've had, uh, actually looking back, you've been involved in the paranormal scene now for, quite a long period of time right when did you first when did you first start producing your shows I think we started filming in 2001 um and uh yeah and we're still filming we're still going and I, I think the show is is been sold to over 100 territories worldwide within that you know from 2001 right through to now um we've been all over the world with it we've just had the most amazing adventures you know, I mean, I, I, you know, from normal sort of two bedroom houses in Leeds right through to being dropped down a well in Transylvania, you know, outside <laughs> Dracula's Castle. It's, you know, Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, you know, yeah. the whole road was stopped and we had police barricades on either side while I was doing a piece to camera. And it was just, it's just been the most incredible ride and it, and it's, and it's still happening now. And Every week, you know, me and Carla are like, oh, where should we go this week? And how cool is that to be able to still keep doing it and loving it? And I think that's that's the key, isn't it? It's to be, it's to really enjoy what you're doing and, and really love it and be content with what, how you're doing it. And, and, and I just love it. I'm, I'm so lucky. I, I, honestly, I think you guys are truly blessed. I, I, I mean, I think, haven't you done something like over around 300 episodes of, of Most Haunted now? Is that where you're yeah, up to with it? Absolutely. I think. I mean, Carl, who's pop, pop his head in. Say hello, Carl. Producer, director. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Carl. Hello there. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, good to see you, mate. It's, do you know, it's an absolute honour to, to meet you, even over this, not in person, but it's an honour to meet you. Oh, well, it's on honour for you to join us here because I'm telling you, the Forbidden Planet Massive are huge, huge fans of your respective work, like you wouldn't believe, Aww. you know. So it's very kind of you to drop in and speak to them. I really appreciate it. Uh, that, thank you. I just say thank you for your time doing this. Yeah. It's uh, a very talented lady. How many episodes? Uh, at this present moment, including the lives, um, we've done 360, I think, in total. I think it's just coming up to 360 in total. Yeah. And how many have we got on the shelf that have never been aired? Oh, we've got, this is one thing people don't realise, we have 73 shows on the shelf that have never seen the light of day because um, uh, nothing happened. So boring. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I think, nothing happened. It was, it was like a... Uh, like a really boring dinner party yeah. where no food was served. Just sat around going, is there anybody there? Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Nothing. thought for one second you were going to say we had 73 episodes that we can't know because what happened is so truly disturbing. Like the real life version <laughs> oh, of I Ghost wish. Watch. I wish. Yeah. I was <laughs> yeah. Some of the earlier shows, I'll, I'll nip off because I know this is about Yvette, but some of the earlier shows that we did with Living TV, there were some things they wouldn't show. Oh yes, they that's wouldn't right. They wouldn't let us. It, it was too convincing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it, it, and you kind of—I I don't understand what that means. And also that there were the when we had a lot of research done in the stuff we caught, we used to send off to universities and stuff all the mm. footage. And when we came back with all the results of, you know, this is this is neither animal, mineral, or vegetable, we tried to get the channels to say, well, let's 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 put that out, but they kept saying no one's interested. <laughs> in the research and you think no that's 
we, we were be pulling our hair out, yeah, you know, right. because we were going, this is amazing, this is real, this is a scientific breakthrough, come on, this is amazing, and they'd be like, well, you know, no, not really, you know, we want, we want the drama, we want, yeah, but this is fantastic, so it was very frustrating for us. Now, I'm going to leave you guys, okay. Clarice, in a bit, it's uh, lovely to, it was really lovely. Lovely, to lovely so to meet you, Carl, really okay. nice, okay. take okay. care, make, mate. Sure, make sure you fold the, the underpants in the right way. <laughs> yeah. Guss it up, is it? Guss it up, yeah. <laughs> I love your, I love your, uh, I love your armor, by the way. The fantastic. Oh yes, that's Carl's. Honestly, well, because uh, uh, Carl at the moment he's done a museum um, in Morecambe. When I say he's done a museum, they've um, uh, rented out a um, so. South, sorry, Southport. You'll know it. Oh, I know it well. Oh, well yeah. It's next door to where I grew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Southport Museum. Yeah. The Botanical Gardens, thank you. I couldn't remember. Well, I've spent many hours of my life at the Southport Botanical Gardens, so there yeah. You go. I, I, so the actual so, building there, yeah. the actual building we've taken over. Oh, what a great we, location. That's perfect yeah, for you guys. Yeah. And Carl has basically, well, um, uh, turned the whole thing into, you know, slowly but surely you're doing it, aren't you? And a lot of artifacts from the house and from Most Haunted and things like that, we've, we're sort of turning it into a haunted museum. Um, and that's Amazing. going really well. Yeah, it's, it's doing really well. Anyway, sorry, digress. Just, just as a side note, I think what, what's beautiful about your, your working relationship, your, your marriage or relationship is you've managed to build this incredible thing, incredible pop cultural artifact, which is your show and your 300 hours of television, uh, 300 episodes of television, uh, but also within the context of your relationship. And few people are ever are lucky enough to do that, I think. And, you know, to work on, you know, to have something that entwined with their own lives and it's happy in both avenues i think you're very lucky people to be in that oh, place thank you well i think yeah i think it comes down to <laughs> he's smiling at me now i think it comes down to respect it's respect yeah. i respect everything that he does and we back each other 100 percent um and as you know you know this this world that we work in you know you can meet some very unsavory characters and absolutely you know yeah. and you and it's nice to know that you've got somebody that really loves you and has got your back you know and, and we're, we're just yeah. lucky, lucky that we met and fell in yeah. love yeah no I, I i i i think you really are and i think it i think it comes through in in the work you guys do together and think speaking of that work that you guys have done together um so over the last 20 years what how, what what has been what has been the most disturbing thing that you think you've witnessed and been involved in? Blimey, I think there's a couple. I think the very first time that I actually saw three crew members be physically hurt by something that I I just couldn't explain. It really upset me. Um, we were doing a live show um, and we were transmitting live not only across the UK, but we were transmitting live across um, the US for Discovery Channel. Um, and it was, we, we were at the um, uh, Edinburgh Vaults. So we were down underground and there's one part of the Edinburgh Vaults that has a stone circle that's been there for, oh gosh, hundreds and hundreds of years. And allegedly it was it was built there to do, you know, for witchcraft and witches were allegedly in this place. And lots of people that had been in this particular part of the Edinburgh vaults um, that were having a tour, they'd actually call out, you know, call out and say, I've been scratched or I've been burned. And um, obviously the curators and people that were running it were like, oh, this is a bit, this is a bit freaky. Um, so they told us when we get when we got there, they said, whatever you do, don't stand in the center of the circle and be disrespectful because people have had this really weird phenomena happen. So, of course, Carl and Stuart and another member of the uh, Most Haunted team as a sound guy decided that they were going to be very disrespectful. So before filming began, they stood in the center and swore and did all this stuff. And I'm going, don't do that. Why are you doing that? that don't be silly. Anyway. Three, two, one, we're on air. Um, we do the investigation. And on uh, uh, Stuart is stood, um, the camera is, is here, the, the one that's going straight uh, uh, to uh, across America. He stood slightly to one side of it and he's wearing a, a black leather jacket and I'm stood next to him. Um, so the camera has seen the back of us. And all of a sudden Stuart just screams, ah, God, ah! there god help me help me and i mean what the hell's going on he said get it off get my jacket off so i pulled his jacket off now this is on camera and he has a white t-shirt underneath the black jacket and you see blood starting to come through the white t-shirt he rips his his um 
uh, t-shirt off and from the top of his right shoulder blade right down to the top of his left buttock are three very deep scratches wow. and it was so traumatic for me to see this I, I was I just didn't know what to say I was completely what the hell I've never seen any like it seconds later Carl screams and he's got three scratches right down the back of his neck so blood starts coming out there then the sound guy he screams drops to the floor and from the middle of the side of his calf uh, right down to his ankle um, uh, is a, a cut so deep you can see his bone and he was taken to accidents and emergency and stitched up. Well, I resigned that night. I resigned. Yeah. I said, I, I can I'm understand not, that. I said, I am not doing, whoa, this, this is, we're dealing in stuff that we've no idea what we're doing. This thing is, this, we're doing a te television show. I, I, I don't know what the hell I'm letting myself in for here. You know, this, yeah. this is crazy. Um, anyway, after sitting up, all night i remember as well because i said it on air i think it's still on youtube i said it on air i said I, I that's it i've had enough people were turning up into at the hotel and leaving flowers saying please don't leave please don't leave the wow. show please don't do it um and we stayed up all night the whole everybody stayed up all night talking about it because we just had to talk about it. it was the most bizarre thing ever and uh, eventually I had, we had a rest from it and a couple of weeks went by and then slowly but surely my interest was really peaked. I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I just thought, you can't run away from this. You've got, to, you've got to delve into this more and more. And now it's become, I know this sounds terrible, but I'm disappointed if we don't get scratched. <laughs> because I then did my research and I found out that some of the most famous cases, the most frightening cases, you know, that have been turned into Hollywood movies and have scared millions to death, you know, um, just like The Exorcist, um, uh, oh God, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, yeah, the, the Conjuring of, movies. So yeah, those, those Conjuring, kind of you know, a lot of them are based on real phenomena and real yeah. cases. You know, we all know that The Exorcist was based on, you know, it was a little girl in the movie, but actually in real life, it was a little boy. Um, and one of the phenomena that happened with him when I started reading into it was this scratching, burning phenomena and actually words and letters being scratched out on, on torsos and, and arms. Um, and so I've come there and I, I put this in my new book, you know, sort of started about, you know, burning and, 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 and things like that. And it is frightening, but actually I've come to the conclusion as in life, as in death, where there is light, there is dark, where there is, where there is good, there is evil. And so this, this negativity actually comes out as this burning and scratching phenomenon amongst other awful things. But now I'm really like, come on, let's get to the yeah. next of it, you know? yeah. But I think yeah. science should be more involved in it. I really, really do. And yet, because, you know, we've been, it's a TV program, they don't see it as a serious thing. A lot of people will say, oh, it's made up, you know, it's drama, it's TV. It's, it's a, well, it's not made up, it's real. And it's real phenomena. Um, and so I get very frustrated with the whole thing because I wish that science would take a more keen interest in it. Yeah, I, I think you're definitely on something. I mean, my dad uh, up in Liverpool is like the most pragmatic guy in the world. I remember when I was a kid once and we were we got hold of a Ouija board and he just like steamed straight in, never having talked about any supernatural phenomenon at all in his entire life. And not since then either. He was like, yeah, you're not doing that. You, I, the, there is... I, I don't even want to talk about there's something to this stuff you can't touch it so he's had some episode in his life that he just I, I've never been able to he's in his 90s now never been able to draw him on it oh, wow. but his whole thing is yeah it, there is absolutely something there and you don't want to mess with it yeah yeah exactly exactly and and I'm sure you just see this time and time again but I, I think you're absolutely right you know to fail to recognize that these things exist and are there and are, are force within the society the world in which we live is a big mistake absolutely right and i think that we sh i know there are parapsychologists in there but they a lot of i'm not downing parapsychology whatsoever um but i think that there a lot of them are all too quick to sort of poo poo a lot of the things that people have seen and experienced and i think it's right that we always try and look at the logical side of things first before jumping to conclusions and i think that's something i've tried to instill in myself is you know just because there's a draft coming from a door or just because there's a you know it doesn't always mean it's paranormal 
you know, always try to look at the logical side of things. And another thing that I, I get a bit frustrated is with, with all these people coming out with new ghost gadgets and ghost this and, you know, use this gadget and they'll help you talk to the other side. And I think, fantastic, let's experiment with everything. Um, but at the, at the same time, you know, and I think it's something that Carl's always said is that, you know, we've never actually captured the essence of what a ghost is. So how can we invent a piece of machinery to try and capture something that we don't know how it's made or what, you know, yeah. what, what yeah, right. and, and, and another thing that I find absolutely fascinating when people are all too ready to poo poo in the paranormal is some of the greatest minds, and you'll know this in the whole world, were spiritualists and their inventions were invented to talk to the dead. You know, Graham Alexander Bell invented the telephone. His first, you know, his first piece of, you know, invention was to actually talk to the dead. John Logie Baird, the tube in the back of the television, again, to talk to the dead. Um, you know, and, and Einstein, for God's sake, was always saying, energy cannot die. Where does, once our, once our car, our, our, our vehicle that we use, our body is dead, where does that energy go? You know, and I'm a huge believer in, you know, these amazing people that have really, you know, they know their stuff. They're fantastic scientists and inventors. You know, who are, who are these sort of, some of these people to poo poo the spiritual side of things? You know, there's so much we don't know. So I'm going to pause Yvette there. Yvette had a lot of interesting things to say about her career in the paranormal and her, about her new novel series, The Ghost Hunter Chronicles and novel one in that series, The House in the Woods, which you can order from the links attached to this conversation. And we're going to put the rest of this fascinating conversation into another episode of Forbidden Planet TV, which will be airing soon. So I'll see you here for that. Take care. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.